participants speak only when invited. Can I firstly ask everyone to mute their microphones and turn off their video feed? Thank you. Members of the public are welcome to view the proceedings, but should not make any contributions at this meeting. Please remember to unmute your microphone and switch on your video feed when it is your turn to speak. Speak clearly and slowly into the microphone. <laughs> Members wishing to speak should indicate using ra the raise your hand button on the microwave Microsoft Teams, or if you do not have that, please indicate using the chat facility. I will invite members to speak at the appropriate time. I ask for everyone's patience with this use of technology. I apologise in advance if we experience any unforeseen difficulties which we shall try to resolve. May I invite members to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and to give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Before we proceed with the agenda, can I ask the council to join me in observing a minute silence as a mark of respect to the late memory of His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. May you rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. 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 Apologies for absence. I have received an apology from Council Simon Phipps. Are there any further apologies for absence, please? Mr Griffiths, none. Thank you. Declarations of interest. Any prior declarations of interest made under the Members Code of Conduct have been published online. Interests previously disclosed at meetings are recorded in the minutes in the White Book, which is also published online. All those interests will be taken as read. They will be deemed as repeated at this Council meeting. I now invite members to declare any additional interest. None, Mr Griffiths. No one indicated. Thank you. Thank you. Minutes. I move that the minutes of the meeting held on the 22nd of February and the 1st of March 2021 be confirmed as a correct record and signed. Does the council agree? 
Aye. That is carried. Mayor's announcements. May I take this opportunity to welcome Balvinda Aaron, who is now the Deputy Chief Executive. I wish her all the very best in her new role. Lucia Fulci, Director of Digital Customer and Commercial Services. I welcome you, Lucinda, in your new role. And also to Heidi Marsh Gayton, who is Acting Director of Public Realm. I am sure that all members will join me in wishing them every success in their roles. And once again, yeah. I add my, my personal wishes to the three of you in your new roles with this authority. Yeah. Members are asked to note the following upcoming events. On our patron saint, Jason George, on the 25th of April, um, the Children's Dragon Trail. Um, I'm told that that will be sent out to you uh, by Kappa uh, with the full details. On the 17th of May, International Day Against Obophemia, Transphobia and Biphobia on the 17th of May. I believe there is a function uh, where it will take place. I'm a little uncertain on that one at the current time. On the 24th and the 27th of June, we shall be holding a drive-in cinema at Himley Hall. Incorporating in that will be the Under Fives Day and the Armed Forces Day. So that will take place between the 24th and the 27th of June. Further information on these events will be circulated to you uh, uh, as soon as the available comes, uh, information becomes available. Finally, this is the last meeting of the council before the municipal elections. At that period, we shall be losing Councillor Julie Baines, Councillor Brian Cottrell, Councillor Les Jones, Councillor Christine Perks, Councillor Dave Toyler, and Councillor Vanessa Whale. We'll not be seeking re-election on the 6th of May. Also, we have two resignations, that of former Councillor Jay Cooper and former Councillor Nicola Richards, who have both recently resigned from this council. I would like to place on record my appreciation for the dedicated public service given by those members and express my sincere best wishes for the future to each and every one of them. I now invite members to indicate if they would like to speak to pay tribute to any of the retiring members. Thank you. Are we ready? Are there any members wishing to speak? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, there's 10, but then I'm hands up. Yes, I'm. I'm. Councillor Millward. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there was a lot more in front of me. I'm sorry, but um, I, I, I'm relying on uh, assistance here, to be perfectly truthful, Councillor Millward. Uh, what was the first to indicate, Mr. Griffiths? Yeah, well, I, I, yeah. Uh, well, I'll take you then, Councillor Kettle, if I may, please. Councillor Kettle. Oh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Good, thank you, Mr Mayor. Good evening. I'm delighted to speak for my colleague, Leg Les Jones, in Pedmore and Stourbridge East. Uh, Les has been a hardworking, dutiful uh, councillor for 20 years. And the fact that he's decided to retire, in some respects, saddens me. But in other ways, I'm delighted that he's retiring in good health and he can enjoy the future with, that, with fewer responsibilities. 
Um, Les has been a hardworking member of the Conservative Party, well, probably for 30 years that, I, that um, and, and 20 years as a as a councillor, and stood for the election in several roles, including uh, the parliamentary elections on several occasions. These uh, duties and these these uh, parts of your voluntary life um, take an awful toll out of you, mm-hmm. and to do it several times without success, I think we ought to give a sense of gratitude to Les for all the hard work that he's done. I do wish him Cantorale. a healthy and long retirement and good luck in the future. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Kettle. Uh, I now call upon Councillor Harley. Th- th- thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, I'll try and mention all of them in the brief five minutes we have. Uh, first of all, Jake Cooper. Having Jake in the Conservative group these last five years has been so refreshing. His humour and youth have brought many qualities to the group and they'll be sorely missed. I really hope that we have not seen the last of him and I hope to see him back in the chamber uh, at some time in the future. Reference uh, Brian Cockrell, Mr Mayor. Brian served you know, 22 years and one of the real characters on this council, a good old-fashioned community councillor, councillor who I had the privilege to work alongside on several ward related issues and it would be remiss mr mayor not to mention that brian's probably the only member to have a council meeting adjourned due to his vandalism of the sound system a few years ago uh, moving on to judy baines i don't know judy personally but i know of the cross-party approach she's taken in working with the ward colleagues paul bradley and pete lee in amblecote and that approach has been refreshing and allowed the three to represent the people of amblecote to their full abilities Les Jones, Mr. Mayor, I first met Les whilst campaigning in Worsley during the early days of the Conservative Tuesday night flying squads. And uh, although 1998 is such a long time ago, I have to say I value his advice and on all things political as much as I did all those years ago as I, as I do now. Uh, his thoughts and views are the ones I look for before anyone else is at group meetings. And I do regret the fact that Les is stepping down. I recall a conversation with him quite a few years ago now where we were sort of discussing at what time we would both step down from the council. And I think probably a term too early, but Les isn't far away from what he was saying. Um, I believe we'll miss him greatly on, on, on our side of the chamber, Mr Mayor. His ability, his wisdom, his ability to lead an attack on the opposition and his ability to easily grasp the detail of any report, no matter how lengthy. Les, we will really miss your presence, and it's such a pity that COVID presents us from doing these tributes tonight in the correct manner. Uh, moving on to uh, Dave Tyler. Um, Mr Mayor, a very fierce opponent during my early time on the council, but over the years, especially during his time as chair of Overview and Scrutiny, and more recently as mayor, uh, there's a mutual respect grown up, particularly for myself towards Councillor Tyler. He served a remarkable long time as a school governor and will in a few years complete over 20 years service as a ward member for King Sinford North and Wall Heath. Some of the scrutiny work he's been involved in as chair has been some of the best scrutiny this council has done, i.e. Hall Street, and, and done this performance through the first eight months of the pandemic. I wish him and his lovely wife, Barbara, all the best in, in his retirement. Uh, finally, Mr Mayor, on to uh, former councillor Nicola Richards. Our loss here is West Bromwich West gain. Uh, Nicola came to me for two weeks work experience many years ago. She returned a few years later, signed up as a party member and was raring to go. She was at the time too timid to even knock on doors. Uh, but look at her now, Mr Mayor, not only someone with the confidence to organise Dudley South's local election campaign in 2019 that saw us gain the seat that she oversaw, Brockmore and Pensnet, but she also gained a seat for the party in the 2019 general election. To say we're incredibly proud of Nicola's achievements is an absolute understatement. Mr Mayor, all members, whether serving for one term or over 20 years, sacrifice a lot in order to serve. It's a commitment that can cause you to neglect loved ones, hamper a career and seriously erode any free time that you think you may have. To all those who have served or are now stepping down, uh, you know, we thank you for your service to your community and wish you all the best for the future. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Harley. Uh, Councillor Barlow. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, first and foremost, I want to uh, uh, pay tribute to Councillor Les Jones as former leader of the uh, council and of this uh, Conservative group. Um, Les isn't the uh, eldest member of the council, but uh, I think Les we can probably class as our elder statesman of this authority. Um, Les's knowledge of everything uh, that goes on within this council uh, and also nationally um, has been outstanding. I don't think there's anything that Les doesn't know um, or he certainly finds out. Um, Les will be a loss to this council. And I know that we say that every time that a member stands down. Um, but Les's legacy is the fact that he is an excellent debater in the council chamber and that will be missed um, because we do need healthy debates uh, within the chamber once we get back into that environment. Um, Councillor Tyler, Dave Tyler, um, as uh, the leader has just mentioned, has been an excellent chair of health scrutiny over this past year and has been a fair chair in analysing the work of all council departments through this pandemic and also our partner organisations. So Dave, thank you very much for everything that you've done as well. Council, former Councillor Nicola Richards has turned into a, a fantastic politician and I think she's got a very long career ahead of her and uh, as the leader has said um, amazing to see how she has blossomed over these years and also Councillor Cottrell um, yes we will miss you and uh, the chats that we've had over the years so uh, and also to Councillor Baines and to Councillor Whale as well so uh, uh, we wish you all the very best um, with whatever you do and your very long and happy retirement as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Barlow. Uh, Councillor Millward, did you want to speak now? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just thought it was fair that others who pressed the button before me and the leader had got in before I had, I had my say. Could I um, could I just stop you there? I, we've yeah. had some technical difficulties. That was the difficulty I was experiencing. Oh, right. It's now Sorry. it has now been sorted. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, in time on a tradition, and to paraphrase Les, I wasn't going to speak on this issue tonight, but I thought that uh, I ought to, but really I was going to speak. It's always sad, Mr Mayor, when we lose, um, you know, well-known, respected councillors of either side, people that you've got to know over the years and people who, you know, you share some common ground with even, even though we're, we're, a lot of us, you know, are opposite, opposite parties. Um, people like uh, Brian Cottrell, who has been an absolute joy and wonder to work with and listening to his experiences, you know, um, that's absolutely brilliant. And I wish Brian all the very, very best. Dave Tyler, Mr. Warheath, before he ever became a councillor, was very well known in Warheath, him and his wife, Barbara. Uh, it was a natural progression, I think, for Dave to become a councillor. And I'd like to thank Dave for all his work um, and to wish him very well in his retirement. Yes, we've got um, Nicola, who's doing really, really well, and it's going to be sad that we, we, we lose her. And Christine Perks, who's, you know, she comes on the phone to me and we have long chats about children's services. And she's really, really pulled her weight in that committee. And she's been very, very passionate uh, also, Julie as well, Julie Baines, who I don't know too well, but Julie has always contributed. And Vanessa, and Vanessa's done a lot of work outside of this council with her charity work for, um, you know, um, Ian Murray's uh, little lad. Um, and we'll miss Vanessa as well, you know, with her quiet, you know, sort of um, campaigning in the background. Jake, I'm really sad to lose Jake. He came up through youth council which just shows the confidence and the self-esteem that these organisations can give young people and to empower them. And he used to drive me mad and a lot of our committee mad with some of his questions, but he was really passionate. And once we set him on the right track, Jake was a really, really, you know, sort of well-grounded scrutineer who was learning his craft. And as, as the leader said, you know, we really would like to see people like Jake Cooper back. 
And then I come to our friend and colleague, Les Jones. And it's true to say that, you know, back in 2011, when I lost my seat by two votes, Les became the leader of this authority and he carried out that task impeccably. And he has stood for us, for the Conservatives, as a number of, um, in a number of roles as police and crime commissioner, parliamentary candidate on several occasions. And it's true to say, Mr Mayor, that the only, only time, truthfully, I have ever cried over politics was in 2015, when Les, so very, very narrowly, was defeated um, in the Dudley North seat. He is, without doubt, the finest MP we never had. I'm sad that he's leaving. He is the elder statesman of the chamber. If you like, the Dennis Skinner of the chamber. Les never said anything unless it was worth saying. And I've told lots of new councillors over the years, watch Les Jones if you want to learn your craft. He sits back and he takes everything in. Then he analyses it and he gets to his feet and he speaks. Les has never been good with uh, pre-written speeches. He'll tell you that himself. He could talk off the cuff. And that is what we are going to miss so, so much. And I'm really sad that he's standing down. But I understand that, you know, he wants to uh, relax a little bit now. And, and, and all the hard work, he does take it out of you. I do believe that we won't be seeing the last of Les. We'll still keep in touch with him. Um, we'll still go for that point down the crown when we can to celebrate and Les thank you so much for all your support and all your hard work and I think I'm going to have to turn off because I think I'm going to cry again sorry Mr Mayor thank you thank you Councillor Millward uh, Councillor Zider please thank thank you Mr Mayor um, I'll, I'll try and be quick I'm mindful of time and technology is not necessarily working as best as it is start off with a uh, Colleagues across the chamber agree wholeheartedly with what we've heard about Councillor Les Jones, lifelong servant, former leader, probably is one that still will remain of the fabric of this authority, respective of where he goes. And um, it's always good, uh, Mr Mayor, when we do politics together and we can have a good debate and at the end of it, we can make better decisions. Councillor uh, Nicola Richards, Mr Mayor, always found her professional, calm and respectful. I will miss that of her because I think we are starting to creep into territory of this chamber where those are the skills that we're short of. I, I can't wish her well politically, but I do wish her well personally. Um, obviously sad to see one of our younger members, Councillor Jake Cooper, leave as well um, and um, <clears throat> wish him the best as well. I'll start with my colleague, um, Councillor Chris Perks, who I've known for many, many years and well before I started in politics and and she's been a community campaigner, very, very well deserved retirement. I will be really sad to see Christine leave. I consider her more as a family than a colleague. I can't remember any time in the, any form of community activity where Christine hasn't been involved. I admire that the fact that she left Amblecote as a councillor, she re remained committed to a number of projects there and still continued there and still would pick up the phone from Amblecote residents. To her credit, Mr Mayor, many people won't know the work that she did before here, which was around the Netherton and Woodside partnership supporting the most vulnerable in our ward. The Netherton Fund Day has her hallmarks all over it. The, she's a member of the Parks Group, the Regeneration Group in Netherton that saw things bring the light back into Netherton. She um, would be at every single TRA meeting, every single community uh, group meeting. She's one of those people that was the foot soldier of bringing back the Netherton anchor to its rightful home, Netherton. And I can tell you, Mr Mayor, she was doing litter picks well before people saw it as a route to getting elected. Uh, people recognise her. I've been with her. She's selfless strong in her opinion and whilst we've had many a discussions where we haven't agreed we've had a good old hug at the end of it me and my colleagues mr mayor will miss her i know she will still be active in the community and this is a well-earned break has christine has done so much for netherton woodside and st andrews and i know she's done a fantastic job as a representative of amblecote uh, too i wish she would put her feet up 
in her caravan, but I know she won't. Yes. She's an amazing local person, heart of gold, and I'm going to miss her tremendously. I'll move on to Brian Cottrell, Mr. Mayor. Well, if, you, if nobody's heard of Brian Cottrell, then there's no point doing politics in, in Dudley, I would say. If we were to cut up Brian Cottrell, we would, we would see the words community councillor written through him. His ambition, Mr. Mayor, when many people come to this chamber to progress in various different roles, he's only had one ambition, and that's to serve his constituents and serve them well. And I want to congratulate him, Mr. Mayor, for doing such a fantastic job for the past 20 years. The people of Quarry Bank and Dudley Wood know who to go to when there is a significant issue, and Brian Germain, and he's like a dog with a bone, Mr. Mayor. He doesn't care if you're Labour, Conservative, or any other colour. Yes. He will get his issue uh, across. He's been my vice chair. He's been my uh, partner in crime for over a decade now, Mr. Mayor, on area committees when they existed and community forums. And I've, I've enjoyed his lack of discipline, Mr. Mayor, on getting his issues across. Irrespective of what the rules are and whatever, whatever the time limits are, he will carry on and you've got to let him carry on because once he's got it off his chest, he can move on. Um, I can tell you, Mr. Mayor, I feared him more than the audience that attended that committee. And when I was preparing, I would look at his casework first before I went on my own, because I knew that's where the biggest uh, stick I would get from. Massive advocate for all things transport, Dudley Ring and Ride. Mr. Mayor, M uh, Brian Cottrell is the man who's represented uh, the, the people of Quarry Bank and Dudley Wood and got under the skin of the issues, a true gentleman, Mr. Mayor, in every sense of the word. And I'd like to make sure we give him a good old send off as other colleagues when we get the time. Moving on to Dave Tyler, Mr. Mayor, first elected in 1999, as has been mentioned, Mr. Kings Winford, I would add, and Mr. Warleaf led with dignity and grace some challenging scrutiny processes and has led us to refine the council. The community forums, Mr. Mayor, is his invention and something he worked to engage people into local politics. There are two records he set, Mr. Mayor. One was visit 100 businesses across his time as being a mayor and the biggest uh, amount of money raised, £58,750, went to three deserving charities, Dudley Mine, Alzheimer's Society and the YMCA. Really admire the work that he's done across the borough and especially for something that's close to my heart, which is the mental health charity of mind. He's pushed leaders to take note. And I can say I've visited uh, businesses with him and I've taken a tour of the ward with him. He's been our armed forces champion. He's made us proud in the way he's conducted those, uh, those duties. And I know that when he was planning to retire last year and I rang him up around COVID, he said to me, um, I said, I'm really sorry, Councillor Tyler, you'll have to hang on another year. And he said, that's fine. My residence come first. Mm -hmm. I can't say any more than wish him well and his lovely wife, Barbara Well, who I've met on a number of occasions. He is uh, he is a gentleman that I will miss. Vanessa Whale, Mr. Mayor, Lion Wollascoat, uh, sorry, Ly, uh, Establish North has had significant sure. challenges with he's sure. been at the heart of. Um, I know that you're pushing me for time, Mr. Mayor, so I will try and fast track this, but please forgive me. And Julie Baines, she has worked tirelessly with Amble Coat councillors, picked up where Christine left off and some massive issues there around travelling community when they were there. And she led that with some significant vigour and made sure that those people were represented. Finally, Mr. Mayor, we have over 100 years of public service about to leave this chamber tonight. This residents of this borough will appreciate the number of days that it takes from your family. And as the leader of the council says, you often make decisions about putting residents first over your family. I'm one of those people. I know that every single one of those people in this chamber will be making those decisions. And I want to congratulate these people for giving their time up to represent the people of this borough. They do appreciate it and we appreciate it and we will make sure that you all get a fitting tribute when the time is right. I am really sorry that we're doing this via virtual and uh, if, if I could put in words anything differently to uh, congratulate you and give you the uh, applause that you need, I would do that, but I will do that when the time is right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'm sorry that I've spoken uh, probably a little longer than, than, than was necessary. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Zardia. Uh, Councillor Heavens. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I'd like first of all thank to thank everyone who's standing down. They've served their wards extremely well and put a lot into Dudley Council. The people that I'd like to talk about shortly is Brian Cottrell. I've known Brian for a long time. Brian has always put the people of Quarry Bank first and their thought line and their interests has always gone there. He will be sadly missed by this council and I wish Brian very all the very best. Uh, Councillor Dave Tyler, um, serving as mayor, I think Dave has done a tremendous job as mayor. He's always actually supported the people of his own our area and at Dudley as well. But the one outstanding for me really is Councillor Jones. I've had the privilege over the last 20 odd years working with Councillor Jones. I believe that Les is one of the most outstanding conservative councillors I've ever come across. We, he will be sadly missed. He has that ability to get up in council and talk about any subject with a tremendous knowledge and with our paperwork. Les has always talked up to the top of his head and I wish Les a thank you and all the very best for the future. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Evans. Uh, call upon Councillor Foster, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, uh, I want to uh, pay tribute to all uh, council colleagues that are are, are leaving uh, leaving us in in May. Um, I, I want to uh, express my uh, thanks for the work that Jake and Nicola did. I think as young people uh, who are involved in politics, I think it's a welcome. It's welcoming, uh, and it's and it's. And it's really positive that young people take an interest in politics and seek to stand for election. Uh, and it's just a shame that uh, we, we, we perhaps with, uh, with with Nicola, obviously she's moved on to to to, to some grand things. Uh, Jake, uh, whatever he's decided to do, I wish him well. I think both are very talented young people and will be a loss to the chamber. Um, I'd also like to pay tribute to Les because I've known Les since he was first elected and he was also on the police authority. Uh, so I thank him for the contribution he made uh, when he was on the police authority as well. Um, he was very often uh, very supportive uh, and, and had a very uh, consensus uh, style of approach to relationships with uh, councillors on different parties on that committee and uh, his contribution I know was valued. Um, moving on to members of my own party, I don't want to add too much more to what Councillor Zada has already said because I am mindful of the time and the fact that other people want to pay tribute. Um, but I will say um, Vanessa and Julie, they have both done a, a term, but I have to say they have made a real impact uh, where they have stood. Uh, Vanessa, um, obviously the area that she represents um, has a, a number of challenges and she has uh, managed those and and she has worked well with her, her colleagues, uh, Pete uh, and Mo, and I'm sure that they will have something to say as well. And she's a really, a really warm person. Um, she cares about people. This has come across immensely during her time as a councillor. And I know that she will continue to be active in the community uh, with her, her family uh, and others uh, with the charities that she's involved in. Similarly to Julie, uh, again, Julie has taken on a, you know, a, a, a challenging area in terms of uh, where we were politically at the time that she took on uh, that, that particular ward. And I have to say, again, she's acquitted herself with integrity. Um, she's had a consensual approach. She's done an awful lot for the environment. She's done a lot of work with community groups and we very much uh, value what she's done. And I have to say with both Vanessa and Julie, I'm sorry to see them both leave and I wish I had been successful in trying to persuade them to seek election for one more term. Moving on to Christine, I knew Christine uh, before she became a councillor in Netherton. I knew her when she was a, uh, an ordinary member of the Netherton branch when it was Netherton and St Andrews and I was a St Andrews councillor. Uh, and I have to say, she was it, it came to my it was it was always my view that at some point she should stand as a councillor she had a lot to say about council business she, again a very caring person had a lot of good ideas and i was delighted when she was elected in amblecote but i felt that she'd actually come back home when she was uh, selected and then elected uh, to represent netherton 
Moving on to Dave Tyler. Again, Dave is somebody I've known for many years. Uh, I was elected in 1998. He was elected in 1999. And I have to say, um, of the many roles he's carried out in all the time that he's been a councillor, I, I think that the one for me, the role of mayor has stood out in particular. I think he made that role his own. He made that role really special. Um, he combined gravitas uh, with warmth and humour in that role and he's made some positive changes and actually has left some big shoes for others to fill um, in uh, those that have followed him in, in that role. So I thank Dave for what he made of that role and the integrity that he showed in it and for the service that his, and support that his wife Barbara showed during that time as well. Um, and I wish him all the best for the future. I know that he will stay in touch. I know that he's got good work still to do with his charities and, of course, with his beloved uh, Liverpool Football Club. And finally, Brian Cottrell. I first met Brian at a selection meeting uh, for a seat that we both wanted. Um, this is in 1998 and um, I, I, I got the selection, but I always thought, having spoken to him before the interviews, I thought, well, if he doesn't get this, he's going to get something very soon. There's just no way this man is not going to be selected somewhere. And he was actually sec selected the year after in 1999 for Quarry Bank. And he has served Quarry Bank with enormous commitment, sometimes, you know, at the expense of his own health. He's so passionate about uh, the community, he's so passionate about helping people. Um, he really brings that dimension, that special dimension to the role. And he's really rigorous and tenacious and he never gives up uh, for his constituents. And many of us as elected members, even his own party, have sometimes felt that rigour, as I'm sure have officers over the years. Mr Mayor, he took that role on in 1999, hitting the ground running. And he's leaving the council now, but he's still running and still and he still has his constituents at the forefront of his priorities. Uh, so those are my tributes, Mayor. Sorry to see them all go, particularly in terms of my own colleagues. I wish that they were all staying on, but I respect their reasons, no matter how, what, what, whatever time they've actually given to the council. We value them for it. We thank them for it. We thank them for what they've done and we hope to continue their excellent legacy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Foster. Uh, Councillor Casey. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, first, I'd like to send my very best wishes to everyone from whichever side of the political uh, divide we're on. My very best wishes. Uh, but there's a couple I'd like to mention. Uh, first of all, Jake Cooper, uh, Councillor Cooper, who sadly is uh, no longer a councillor, um, being elected at the uh, at the age of 18 um, was a real achievement for him. Um, but uh, having gone through university myself, I understand that it really, really is hard work and takes a lot of time and dedication. Um, sad that he's gone because I don't think anyone will disagree that there isn't a more enthusiastic young person out there. And I really do hope that we see him in the chamber again soon. Uh, also, um, sad to see uh, Councillor Nicola Richards uh, leave, but uh, as has already been stated, um, what a fantastic result she had in the 2019 general election. Uh, she, uh, I mean, I'm a relative newbie, uh, but even I'm aware that she was a tremendous asset to Dudley Metropolitan Borough and is now a tremendous asset to the uh, residents in West Bromwich West, and I really do uh, wish her well. Two, two people I'd like to uh, also name. One is Councillor Perks. Um, I haven't known Councillor Perks for very long, um, but already I think a great deal of her. Um, licensing Subcommittee 1 uh, was something I always looked forward to, simply because we were almost like uh, the Subcommittee 1 posse. There was myself, Councillor Elcock and Councillor Perks, and although always professional, uh, it was real fun, almost like carry on licensing. Uh, so, Councillor Perks, I really, really will miss you on subcommittee one uh, and wish you all the best. And finally, uh, Councillor Les Jones. Little did I know, and I think little did Councillor Jones know, that uh, 
we'd actually crossed paths about 10 years ago when he was leader of the council, uh, when I and friends caused uproar in Stourbridge uh, by painting a pub. Uh, we painted a pub white, and you would think that the pub was the, the, the most well-used pub in the history of Stourbridge, uh, when realistically it was derelict, uh, and no one even cared about it until we decided to do something with it. Um, and Councillor Jones, who was leader at the time, uh, had to take all sorts of flack for what had happened to this pub, but ended up having a conversation with me uh, where we uh, where we got things sorted out. Um, we explained that the white colour the pub was painted was actually an undercoat and it was going to be painted the cream that it originally was. Um, but uh, for some reason, whenever I called Councillor Jones, I always popped up as Sean Bell. Well, at least I, th I hope it was just Bell. Um, and we realised after a, a few conversations that, uh, yes, I was that person uh, from the Bell in Stourbridge. Um, but all I'd like to say, Les, is that um, over the three years I've been a councillor, uh, you've always been there um, at the end of a phone line or uh, you've always been there for a conversation. You've always given advice freely. You've been really helpful. Uh, I will really, really miss you uh, in the chamber. And I hope you don't mind uh, if I do phone you from time to time uh, just to benefit from the huge amount of knowledge at the, that you have, because uh, I would hate that to be lost uh, to, to members here at Dudley. So to everyone that is uh, stepping down this year, uh, my very best wishes to you all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Casey. Um, I think the bell is no more. I think the last time I was in Stabbage, I think it's now closed as a pub. Um, Councillor Cowell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I want to wish all colleagues standing down uh, the very best of luck for the future. I particularly want to thank Dave Tyler and Vanessa Whale who helped me during some very difficult times on this council. Not unsurprisingly, however, I direct most of my contribution to Brian Cockrell. Brian can come across as rather serious, but I thought I should share with you a couple of occasions where I have come off worse for an encounter with his sense of humour. The first was around 10 years ago, as I was standing for the first time in Quarry Bank. I was out with Brian campaigning and I remember walking across a sloping front lawn to post a leaflet and I didn't make it, skidding on some very thick wet mud and landing on my front. I called out assuming that he would come to my rescue, but with no sign of him I managed to get myself up before walking back to the pavement dripping with mud to find him hysterical and propping himself up on the lamppost. Another incident that I recall was after a very difficult public meeting. Myself and Brian were walking back to the car with a member of the public who was not impressed with some of the neighbour's comments. I think he swore and then remembered that I was there. He apologised for saying such a thing in front of a lady. Brian responded without any hesitation. No, that's not a lady. It's <laughs> Councillor Cowell. Yeah. Brian used to say that he was my mentor and I would like to thank him for his guidance, particularly in the early years of my time on this council. Quarry Bank won't be the same without him and he will be missed by all. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cowell. Um, Councillor Eileen Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, I'd like to pay tribute and thank everyone who's standing down at this point. They have worked really hard and supported our residents for many years. But I have to say a special thank you to my ward colleague, Christine. Uh, Christine's a very special lady. We've worked together tirelessly. She's worked tirelessly um, for our ward in Netherton and she will truly be missed. I will miss her. Um, I have now that she's standing down, that she can have some time to enjoy her caravan, get out there with her family and, and, and enjoy life. Um, but not to forget us, we're still here and she'll still be welcome to come to us and, and be with us at any point in time. Christine, I will miss you. 
Thank you for being there for us and for being there for me. So thank you, Christine, and thank everyone else. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Speech. That's very good. Thank you very much, Councillor Taylor. Uh, Councillor Lawrence. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to take the opportunity tonight to uh, thank my war colleague and friend, uh, former, account, former Councillor Richards, uh, for all her hard work in our ward. Uh, I know it's been greatly appreciated by uh, the residents that we serve. Uh, Nicola was first elected in, in 2015 and I joined her in 2016. And since then, we've, we've had a great working relationship. And I'm sure this has only had a positive effect uh, on Kings Winford North and Warheath. I understand Nicola's uh, decision to resign and I really do wish her all the best in her new role and long may it continue, um, but she will be missed locally. Um, we lose a number of councillors this year uh, and I wish them all well in their time after the council. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Councillor Lowe. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I'll start uh, my tributes with regard to Les Jones, and it's been interesting listening to the very gushing tributes from uh, the members on his own side of the chamber, and I'm minded as a result of that, of the very famous quote by good old Tony Benn, who simply stated, first they ignore you, then they say you're mad, then you become dangerous, then there's a long pause, you no longer seek public office and then you can't find anyone who disagrees with you and I think that that sums up where we are uh, with Les although hopefully you'll be pleased to know that I still uh, am able to disagree with almost every word that he utters yet still <laughs> have the yeah. great of respect for the way that he puts across this council chamber will miss stalwarts such as Les Jones and I listened in particular to Anne Millwood and agreed largely with the tribute that she became, that she gave, other than I think that he's probably the second finest councillor who never became a member of parliament. And that leads us on to <laughs> the Richards, who uh, I, I'm, I personally, uh, I'm uh, relatively upset that she's leaving the council chamber uh, because she's leaving the council chamber because she's become a member of parliament. But I'm confident that she will see her uh, aspiring to return to Dudley Council in the not too distant future. And of course, then to Jake Cooper, somebody who, for a very young age, an individual who I respect greatly. Uh, I've listened to his debate in the chamber and he has always uh, impressed me. I wish Jake all the very best for the future. And again, I'm sure when the time is right and should he wish to do so, he would be welcomed back into the council chamber if the electorate were to choose that. And then, Mr Mayor, I turn to my own colleagues and it's actually quite emotional to be saying goodbye to the people uh, that we are. And in the time that we've got, and I recognise, Mr Mayor, your commitment that when this pandemic is over, we can all get together, we can virtue, we can hug in reality and say our own uh, thank yous. But I'll start with uh, Brian Cottrell, uh, the leader of our group, uh, CADA talked about Brian's lack of discipline and he reminds me very much of the very famous uh, Hands Forth YouTube where he talks about terms of reference, terms of reference, read them and understand them. Well, if there's one person who probably has read the terms of reference but then deliberately chooses to ignore them, it's our own great Brian Cottrell because he will ensure that his opinion is put over whether it's in the agenda or not. But of course, it's not his opinion. It's based upon the values that he has and the people that he's represented. Brian, I wish you all the very best for the future. You should have been the finance lead of this council for no other reason that I've never yet seen you put your hand in <laughs> your wallet. <laughs> then we turn to Dave, Dave Tyler. And uh, Dave, uh, as the leader of the council, Patrick Harley, will now start it off in a different political party where Patrick had more in common with David for a time. But then uh, David saw the light and moved in the right direction uh, rather than uh, uh, Patrick in the other. And I've got to know Dave and Barbara very well over the years. 
and he epitomizes exactly what we mean by community councillor. People will remember his term as mayor, Mr. Mayor, mayor, when he did so much in order to ensure that uh, Dudley was put on the map. I would like to wish him all the very best in the future with his beloved uh, Liverpool Football Club. But of course, the recent developments over the last 24 hours, I would hope that he will be abstaining until football does the right thing. But all the very best, Dave. I will miss you uh, greatly. Christine Perks. Christine, when she was councillor of Amblecote, started Amblecote in bloom. She then went on to become the councillor in Neverton, yet continued to assist in Amblecote in bloom and alongside the new councillor in Julie Baines. Both of them absolutely passionate health advocates who have done so much on their scrutiny committees to ensure that the health and well-being of people in this borough is maintained and improved. We will miss them absolutely greatly. And I wish Christine and Julie from a personal point of view and thank them for all of the help that they've given me on a personal level. And then finally, Mr Mayor, we have Vanessa Whale, somebody who has worked tirelessly in the background throughout her whole tenure. Now, many of us will know when we have councillors of three that quite often we need that the gobby one, <laughs> the one who seeks that office within the council chamber. But that can only ever be effective when you've got somebody who's willing to take that role with the day to day work that needs doing within that ward to ensure that the requirements of the constituents and the people we represent uh, are maintained. Vanessa has been an exceptional advocate of the people of Lyth and Stowbridge North. Born, Mr Mayor, in the Caledonia estate, went to school with myself and we know very much the same people. She will be greatly, greatly missed. I love Nesta absolute uh, bits and she will be a great loss to us. But I'm sure that the charitable work that Vanessa, Christine, Dave, Julie, Brian, Les, uh, Jake and Nicola do will continue within the community. It's a sad day, Mr Mayor, for each and every one of us, but certainly to my brothers, sisters and comrades on my side of the, uh, the house, I wish you all the very best and I love you all to bits. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Lowe. Uh, Councillor Hanif? Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Like Pete just said, it is a sad day for us all. Um, uh, but my best wishes go out to all the cross-party councillors, whether they're retiring or resigning, Mr Mayor. Uh, many over the years became great colleagues um, and good friends, um, not forgetting supporting me in my cricket matches every year for the Mayor's charities and so on, and many committees that we've sat on. So I, sh I shall never forget you know, all the good times that we've had. Um, just want to point out one or two of them that, that have been very close to me. Uh, Brian Cottrell, Mr. Mayor, when I became uh, a councillor, a new councillor, Brian was very supportive and helped me along, uh, you know, uh, with, with his experience and expertise uh, so on. Um, Dave Tyler, uh, we got closer knowing each other a lot more than just sitting on committees when he was my deputy. Um, and uh, his wife, Barbara, so I, I wish him all the best as well. Christine Perks, when she was in Amblecote, we've done so much work, uh, supported her with her work in Amblecote, and equally she, she came to lie to support us in many ways. Julie, local girl, li lives, you know, lived uh, very close to me here. Uh, again, best, best wishes. And all the resigning councillors as well. Les, I've known for many, many years. Um, Best wishes to you as well, Les, and I'm sure we'll see each other up in Hagley, Pedmore Road and um, Hagley Road, rather, so on. But, Mr Mayor, I, I want to particularly say a farewell to Vanessa Whale, who I have had a uh, real privilege of working together in my ward. Uh, Vanessa has been a, a great councillor and a very supportive uh, councillor um, <clears throat> who worked tirelessly over the four years that she's been a councillor. 
uh, a good friend whom I wish all the best for the future. Um, and best wishes to everyone again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Renee. Uh, Councillor Vickers. Councillor Vickers, do you still wish to speak? Sorry, Mr. Bear, I was running away with myself and you couldn't even hear me. I do apologise. Um, Mr. Mayor, eight people leaving the council is a big hole in the council. That's a lot of people. Uh, and I've enjoyed working with many of these eight people. I remember Christine Perks in particular for her humour. I always liked speaking to Christine before the meeting. She always lightened up the day. Um, Brian Cottrell. I first met Brian at my first committee on the council in 2004, perhaps. Um, I think it was probably the health and safety committee in those days. Uh, and I made the, um, the announcement about some vandals that had been outside his house. And I said they ought to be hung and quartered and slaughtered. <laughs> and on the way on the way home, Brian rang me and said, I've got at last I've got someone who thinks the same as me. <laughs> well, Brian, you've been a wonderful, wonderful uh, opponent in, in the council. You destroyed the um, the the, the, the uh, audio system um, without any problems at all. I wish I could have thought of doing that. Made the meeting much easier. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Dave Tyler. Dave Tyler was a Lib Dem when I was first on the council and he became the leader of the Lib Dems. Dave Tyler and I have not always seen eye to eye, but I will say to you, uh, Mr. Mayor and the other councillors, Dave Tyler was a really good ward councillor. He stood up for his ward, he stood up for his school and he stood up for the people of the borough. Dave Tyler was also an ex-policeman, the same as me, but he was a scruffy. He was a motorcycle policeman, they're called <laughs> scruffies in our terms. Yeah. But he's never been scruffy on the council. He was an exceptional mayor. And I think that's got an awful lot of things that people have got to look up to, the way he performed as a mayor. Our two young leaving stars, Jake Cooper and Nicola, per uh, Nicola uh, Richards, they were wonderful when they first came on. Jake Cooper was 18 years of old age, and I think he only just missed out by days being the youngest councillor in the country. What a lot of humour he bought. What a lot of fun we had trying to keep him down. It was great. And he leaves to, to do better things. Um, and at that age, I don't blame him. He's got plenty of life in him. And I think he'll be back. Nicola Richards. Wow. Amazing. She came on so quiet, so timid, and now she's an MP at West Brom and really showing the Labour group there how an MP should behave. Uh, which brings me to uh, Les Jones. Now, we've had an awful lot said about Les Jones on this council. He is an elder statesman. He is somebody that we're never going to be able to replace. He knows everything about everything. And he's not afraid to stand up and tell us when we're wrong. And he has told me that many, many times that I'm wrong. But Mr. Mayor, something about Les Jones I would like to tell you. He is a great friend, a great personal friend. When my son died, Les Jones came to my house and sat with me all morning. And I'm afraid that's made me uh, weep a little bit. But he's a great personal friend. And I love him very much, Mr Mayor. And I thank you for this opportunity to speak about these councillors. Thank you very much, Councillor Vickers. Um, I now call upon Councillor Cottrell. Councillor Cottrell, please. Mayor, 
Well, I can honestly say I can't recall making that telephone call because it would be the last thing in the world that I should want somebody hung, drawn and quartered. Not my language, not my beliefs at all. So um, I can't <laughs> understand. I think, I think it must be Les Jones that should be drawn you. I, I not me. <laughs> so I've got to put that right. I can't, I'm certainly not my beliefs at all to hang, drawn and quarter people. Mr. Mayor, I... Thank you. I can thank everybody for all the kind words they've said um, uh, uh, tonight. I've looked at today at um, the first election address I had, and that happened to be on Thursday, the 6th of May, 1999. Same day as the elections this year. Now, when I looked at the photograph on this, they tell me the camera doesn't lie. Yes, it does, greatly. But Mr. Mayor, it has been my privilege and pleasure to represent in the first instance to Quaddy Bank and Cradley, and then on to Quaddy Bank and Dudley Wood. It's been my greatest privilege to represent the ward on Dudley Council. And I say thank you for all the kind words. And as for helping Councillor Carl when she slipped down in the mud, I couldn't. I was too helpless laughing. Sorry <laughs> about that. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Cottrell. Uh, Councillor Perks, 10 years since we bought the anchor back to Nether, didn't you know? Has it been that long? Yeah, 10 years. Well, next year it'll be 10 years. Getting close. Thank you. Um, what I'd like to say, Mr. Mayor, is thank you. And I would like to say it's been a privilege and a pleasure to serve the people of Amblecote, Netherton Woodside and St Andrews. As many of you know, I stood as a candidate in Amblecote, but never expected to become a councillor in a million years. I can honestly say that I've always given all, my all to every task um, that I've been asked to undertake. And I knew I'd made it when I met uh, Councillor Liz Walker at Ruskin's Glass one day, who told me that I was one of the hardest working councillors that Amble Coat had ever had. Truly a compliment off Liz. <laughs> I'd like to thank all the officers who have given me their support over the last nine years, and not least the residents of Amble Coat, Netherton Woodside and St Andrews. I would like to thank you. It's been a pleasure and I've met some wonderful people who will remain lifelong friends and am I internally grateful for their support over the years. I'd like to wish everyone um, all the very, very best for the future and to thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Perks. Oh, uh, and I'll pay the others their money after. <laughs> yes. <I yeah>. think. <laughs> oh, the financial looking after that for us, Councillor Perks. We won't let you down. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Councillor Les Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I can say for the benefit of Councillor Millwood in particular. Can you hear me? I look as if I've frozen. I can, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I say this for Councillor Millwood in particular. Um, I definitely was not intending to speak at this meeting tonight. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, I have to because. Um, so many nice things have been said. Um, I do uh, respect and appreciate all of the colleagues that are also standing down tonight Thank for you. whatever reasons. Um, and I also want to say that it's given me a little time to reflect on the last 22 years, in fact, on this council. Um, I can't say I won't miss it, although before tonight, I clearly thought I wouldn't miss it. Um, but there is something about representing people standing up for what you believe in and doing what you feel is right that gives a great sense of personal pride pride in the right form i think um what also strikes me mr mayor is that um over the years i have um attended many occasions like this where we've had retiring members um all of my past and present colleagues and all of my past and present uh, opponents um do do give me that warm feeling that we we as a collective group of 72 people 
we make a difference to the lives of all the people we uh, choose to represent and, uh, and are fortunate enough to be elected to do that. Um, unfortunately, though, Mr. Mayor, this is perhaps one of the nicer occasions that you have to uh, oversee. The other occasion that comes to mind is that the uh, act of being elected usually means that at some point in the future, you will have the, uh, the misfortune or the mayor will have the misfortune of having to announce that we've lost a member um, uh, completely from, from this world. And um, I know that as of uh, the 6th of May, that will be the category that I and many others will fall into. Uh, the only thing I want to leave you with tonight, Mr. Mayor, is the fact that I would like to believe that not one single member in that chamber will know or even care who I was when that announcement is made. Thank you very much. And appreciation to all of the officers that have served us so well over all the years. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Jones. Uh, Councillor Tyler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I think according to the hands, I might be the last one to speak. So um, very briefly, when I was hearing all the glowing tributes to all of all of us who are stepping down, I think one of the first things that occurred to me was that I better check my pulse to see whether I was still alive uh, because they all sounded like obituaries. Um, well, we aren't dead yet. We're just ploughing on uh, on our own furrow with other things to do, and we'll still be having an input into our communities in one way or another. Um, I have to say it's been an honour and privilege to serve Kingsman for North and War Heath in the village where I was born and raised, uh, and um, that has been the greatest privilege alongside um, the, the ultimate honour of becoming mayor of this great borough. Um, I couldn't have wished for anything like that when I was a young lad uh, growing up on a council estate and then finishing up uh, as the mayor of Dudley, the, uh, the first Walworth born lad to do so. Uh, and then going on to chair some of the committees that I have, in particular this last year, which is the most traumatic time in, in our living memory for, um, for health. Um, and I think Dudley has done itself proud by carrying out that scrutiny in the way that everybody bought into and we've done that. Can I just say all the best to every single person that's still on the council, every member, uh, and just to add that it's been a privilege to work with some of the most outstanding officers that this council could ever have. Um, I've got on extremely well with officers and I like to think that they would think the same of me. And first of all, and finally rather, um, best wishes to all the other members that are stepping down uh, on election day. All the best. Thank you very, very much indeed, Councillor Tyler. Uh, you rightfully said that. You are the last speaker. Uh, I thank each and every one of you for the contributions that you've made with our colleagues. It, I know it's been very much appreciated by all. And once again, may I conclude by wishing each and every one of you my own personal best wishes for the future. Thank you. I think at this time, perhaps I should mention the fact of the elections and uh, a lot of us will be standing for re-election. So I'd like to uh, take the opportunity of wishing all the candidates, councillors and otherwise, all the very best in the forthcoming elections on the 6th of May. Thank you. I move over now to reports and recommendations. Uh, capital Programme Monitoring, I call upon Councillor Harley. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, members of the Council, I move that the recommendations of the Cabinet be approved and adopted. I call upon Councillor Vickers to second the motion. Formally seconded, Mr Mayor. I'll put the motion forward. Any members wishing to speak? Councillor Millward, I think, is indicating. Councillor Millward, are you indicating to speak? Yes, I am, Mr Mayor. OK, thank um, you. Yes, and uh, it's regarding page five, um, item 11, the public sector decarbonisation. And I'm really, really pleased that one of the schools in my ward um, has been chosen to uh, benefit from this funding. 
But one thing I just want to ask the leader, the, uh, the funding was dispensed yeah. before the end of September uh, this year, which only gives us five months. It's a short time frame. Um, and how far along are we with this? And will we be able to do this work prior to the funding cutoff date? And indeed, has the work already started? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Millward. Um, Councillor Tyler, have you got the sh question on the same issue? Councillor Tyler. No, Mr. Mayor, my hand was down, I think. But I've been misinformed, so I apologise over that. Um, any, is any number, members wishing to speak, Mr. Griffiths? I can't see any hands indicating. No? OK, then I'll call upon Councillor Ali to uh, reply. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in relation to the specifics of that project that uh, Councillor Millboard's raised, I don't know the, the, the exact details of that, so I'll find those out for her. On the wider subject of projects that may have been delayed due to some of the restraints caused by the pandemic, uh, then I know on quite a few uh, funding, funding uh, schemes that the deadlines have been extended due to the, the effects of, of the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, so it would probably be appropriate if we haven't already, and I'll check with officers, to make sure that this deadline that we request that that be extended to, if we can't complete by the, I think, answer the September date. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any more, Mr. Griffiths? Anyone else indicating? No one. No one else indicating. Okay. That's uh, that's fine. Um, does council agree? Aye. 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 That is carried. Aye. Aye. The leaders replied, haven't you? You replied into Councillor Arley to Councillor well, Millward. Uh, yeah, not, nothing further to add. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you very much. I thought you'd just one question, you'd reply to it. Uh, so that's carried. Um, regeneration of the Porterfield site. I'll call upon Councillor Arley, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, I move that the recommendations of the cab Cabinet be approved and adopted. Thank you, Councillor Arley. Uh, seconder, Councillor Vickers. Formally seconded, Mr. Mayor. Right. Is there any questions? Anyone indicating to speak? Well, I'm not going to have to call upon the leader to reply to that. There are no questions. The council agree? Aye. Aye. That's, ca that's Aye. carried. Aye. Uh, annual overview and scrutiny report 2020-2021. Um, I call upon Councillor Chris Barnett. Councillor Barnett. Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, yes, the recommendation is that the annual overview and scrutiny report for 2020-21 be received and noted. And um, I'd, I'd just like to uh, personally thank all of the officers and uh, everyone. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll have to stop you, Councillor Barney. We need a second there. Uh, is is Councillor Millward second in the motion? Yes, formally seconded, Mr Mayor. I reserve my right to speak. Uh, carry on, Councillor Barney. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. So, I don't uh, like. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd really just like to thank all of the uh, officers in particular who've uh, been part of OV and Scrutiny uh, Management Board and uh, have uh, do done their best to make that committee work. Um, it's uh, it's a little sad that it's uh, it won't continue, but um, you know we we understand why that's happening. But again, just like to thank everyone involved. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Are there any members that wish to speak on the uh, uh, on the um, scrutiny um, report? Councillor Millward. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, um, if you read the report, you will see um, the hard work that has been carried out by all the scrutiny committees. You know, everybody's worked really, really hard. The health scrutiny committee did a, an excellent piece of work. Um, which Councillor Tyler alluded to earlier, which is now a national uh, policy uh, document. It's a, 
a framework uh, for other councils to to compare how uh, Dudley did with the COVID epidemic. And that piece of work was a really fine piece of work. And I'm, I can speak regarding the annual report of the Children's <laughs> Services Scrutiny <laughs> Committee and the hard work that was carried out there. And in particular, um, the, the inroads we have made with the elective home education. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I can hear you, sorry. There's a lot of noise in the background. Uh, the elective home education, whereby we have been in contact with, with the department, because not many people know that there is very little government legislation um, concerning uh, educating your children at home. We want to change that. We want to make uh, it needs to be more accountable. We need to keep an eye on our children that disappear who go off the radar. And I'm very pleased to tell council that the Department for Education and the Secretary of State are going to be holding a number of select committees to look at this very issue. And that's an issue that was being pushed forward by the work of the members and officers of our Children's Services Scrutiny Committee. So a big thank you to everybody who sat on that committee and put their time and effort and passion into bringing this very, very important item to the notice of government. Thank you, Mr. May. Uh, thank you, Councillor Mill Ward. Um, Councillor Crompton. Sorry, I was having a bit of trouble with my microphone then. Um, thank you, Mr. May. Um, First thing, I'd like to thank all of the officers of the who've helped out with the Corporate Scrutiny Committee this year. Um, we've looked at a number of subjects um, and I particularly wanted to bring out three of, of the subjects that we've looked at. First of all, procurement. Um, we've done some work on procurement over the past two years on this committee and um, with the idea really that the Dudley Pound should be spent in Dudley yep. is where we're coming from as councillors. And um, there's still a hell of a lot of work to go on this um, and um, unfortunately because of a change of offices it it, it, it sort of was pulled back from where it should be um, but what we should be doing is we should be ensuring that the hundreds of millions of pounds which are spent by this authority over the years are shared out amongst firms wherever we can in the Dudley Borough um, what we've done is we've um, looked at how we can train councillors to take a more proactive approach with the firms in their areas, because I think it's it's a trick that we miss. We do not do enough um, with local companies at all. Um, and one of the things that we're looking at, for example, is that there's going to be an investment in Bridey Hill. We keep hearing that there's going to be millions invested in Bridey Hill and whether we can have a breakfast meeting with councillors from around the Bridey Hill area um, with local firms and with our officers to see how they can be a part of that huge investment. The second issue that we've looked at recently is the issue of diversity and equality. And I looked back actually through a number of scrutiny committees and um, we, we've always had this phrase in it in our reports, haven't we? Um, um, how, how does this um, affect equality with the, the, the public that we serve, the people that we serve? And um, very often within reports, um, we get, I've got to say quite throw away remarks. I don't think they're meant to be like that, but it, very, very often we get nothing really said about how the impact of what we do will impact upon um, those people who have different, um, different needs. And so we've started the work on that, and I'm hoping that the future council um, committee continues to take that up. Uh, I know that we've got um, people looking at the local authority at the moment to see um, how we can make things better. The third area that we spent some time on this year is the area that our benefits um, officers work on, and I want to pay tribute to those officers. They are an extremely small team who have had to deal with an enormous amount of change over this past 18 months during the COVID crisis. They have managed um, to fairly distribute grants and um, many of them uh, with almost unintelligible rules attached to them to many of the people that we serve. They've en enabled firms to keep going. They've kept our people when they've really hit the breadline going as well. And um, again, it's an area 
well i've asked them this year um to um help us as counselors to understand more about benefits but actually the other thing that i, I i've asked them to do is to do a small uh, what i would call benefit take-up campaign and with the council tax bills this year um, a letter or a form went out explaining more to people how they could claim benefits and we have to do better mr mayor finally what i'd say is we're still not good enough at scrutiny within this council we need to be better than we are i believe that the health scrutiny committee has done an awful lot of work this year to show how scrutiny can actually work but we as a council we as councillors need to hold um, our executive to account we need to show out the public that we serve that we're doing the very best for them that we can and we can only do that i believe by questioning properly what goes on we have to forget sometimes that a ruling party comes from our own party um, and i believe that councillors sometimes uh, are unwilling to ask uncomfortable questions that need asking so well, my plea to people councillors is if you're on scrutiny committees next year please um, ask those questions um, we need answers sometimes thank you mr mayor uh, thank you councillor crompton well joined 20 seconds left you did very well thank you councillor tyler Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'm just going to follow on from what Councillor Tim Crumpton's just said. Um, I'm going to blow the trumpet for the Health and Adult Social Care Scrutiny Committee because uh, we leapt um, headlong into uh, reviewing the scrutiny um, that, that had just hit this community. Um, we were the first council to do so, and I believe we've set the benchmark for how scrutiny of health, particularly health, should be carried out in the future. Um, all the members on the scrutiny committee bought into it. What's more important is that all of our health partners and our other partners also bought into, in a very, very strong way, uh, the scrutiny process, particularly because we were in such trying times. Um, pay particular tribute to the NHS, the NHS Trust at Russell's Hall, uh, the Ambulance Service Police, Mental Health, and the CCG who all played a really strong part. Health Watch also played their part and all our other partners as well. We wouldn't be able to do that, Mr. Mayor, unless we got a strong officer team. And uh, he'll embarrass, I'll embarrass him by saying this, but without Steve Griffiths as our lead um, officer and, and the wonderful support from Helen Shepherd we wouldn't have got this off the ground. They were absolutely exceptional. It does raise the issue, however, that we may need to look at dedicated scrutiny back up from officer level. And uh, however that arrives, I don't know, but it needs to be looked at. And now a heartfelt plea from me and just to follow up on what Councillor Trumpton said, is please, let's improve on scrutiny. Let's take scrutiny seriously and continue the strong scrutiny that we've started on our committee last year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak, Mr. Griffiths? Yeah. No, no further speakers. Now I call upon Councillor Barnett to reply. Councillor Barnett. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you for each of those contributions. And uh, I um, would like to just uh, acknowledge the work that uh, everyone's done in scrutiny this year um, uh, and, and years past. And um, also uh, agree with Councillor Tim Crumpton that we uh, we must find a place to make scrutiny uh, better and uh, as, as, as good as we can. Um, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Barnett. Um, does council agree? All agree? Aye. 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 That, Aye. Is that is carried. Notice of motion. Following the consultation with the group leaders, it has been agreed that the notice of motion previously submitted are deferred for, further, for future consideration. Questions from members under Council Procedure Rule 11. 
The purpose of this session is for members to ask questions. There will be a one hour time limit on the question time session. The time limit will, uh, on all individual contributions during this session will be two minutes. All questions will be dealt with individually, one at a time, if time permits. Members may indicate to ask another question during the session. When I call on members to ask them, I will then call upon members to ask it for any supplementary questions which may relate to the original question or to the answer given. Written questions. No written questions have been submitted in advance. Verbal questions to the leader, cabinet members and chairs. Can members now indicate if they have any questions for the leader, cabinet members or chairs? Members indicating to speak will be invited to ask their questions in order as follows. Councillor Adam Aston. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Mayor. Uh, my question is to the Cabinet Member for Housing and relates to housing of multiple occupation or HMOs uh, within our borough. I'm sure Councillor Taylor will agree that the chronic lack of social housing within Dudley um, and across the country has led to an explosion uh, of properties being used of, uh, as houses of multiple occupation. This situation was enabled by the decision of the government uh, back in late 2010 to amend planning law so that planning permission would no longer be required for a change of use from a dwelling house to a small HMO of six people or less, which effectively silenced the voice of local people. Over the last 10 years in the West Midlands and beyond, a situation akin to the, to the 19th century has developed, where essentially property barons have accumulated huge portfolios and um, providing vulnerable tenants with often overcrowded, poor quality housing. Within the ward I, I represent in the last month, concerns about three separate HMOs have been raised with Council Casey and I, most notably antisocial behaviour um, being experienced by residents who live near um, what is supposedly a, a fully managed HMO. Mr Mayor, I, I'm not opposed to HMOs, but the most vulnerable people in our community who often lead quite chaotic lives require good quality social housing and effective support. Otherwise, they and the people who live around them suffer the consequences. That being said, Mr Mayor, I wonder if Councillor Taylor would commit to working with the Chair of the Development and Control Committee to consider whether an Article 4 direction which removes permitted development rights should be adopted in some areas of our borough. This would mean that planning permission for the creation of a HMO would be a, once again be required um, and with it the opportunity for, for councillors to assess whether it's right or wrong to locate a HMO. Thank you. I've accepted your t 10 seconds over, Councillor Aston. <laughs> well done. Uh, Councillor uh, Laura Taylor to reply. Mr Mayor, I know that Laura Taylor has yeah. trouble with her uh, equipment. Um, can I suggest to, uh, to Adam that uh, if she can't get back on tonight, that we will issue her, issue him with a, a written reply. Uh, Councillor Aston, are you happy with the response? Um, yeah, I, 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 was, I, was, I was anticipating a written reply anyway, so that's fine. Thanks very much, Mr Mayor. You're welcome, Councillor Aston. Councillor Chaliner. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, I would like to ask the Leader of the Council his position on our local green belt. With the Prime Minister promoting a Brownfield First policy and our MP Mark Lungi, along with the West Midlands Mayor Andy Street fully supporting this, Dudley Borough's Greenbelts are continuing to come under threat. 
Mr. Mayor, the area known as the Norfolk Family Greenbelt and the area next to Sandy Fields is currently under review for reclassification and this is to make way for new homes. The residents of Gornal are very concerned what effects this will have on their local infrastructure, amenities, not to mention wildlife pollution and their general well-being. Mr Mayor, would the leader of the council vote to support the residents of Gornal and confirm there is no appetite to build on any local greenbelt sites, continue to do all he can to protect the borough's greenbelts along with its borders? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Chaliner. Um, Councillor Hawley to respond. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, absolutely, and you have a firm commitment from this administration that we will have a brownfield first policy, first and foremost. The green belt is absolutely precious to us all, and we will do all we can to negate the need to build on that green belt. There are many brownfield sites, and we've seen in reports here tonight, Mr Mayor, just on the Portersfield one, 200 student accommodation units, over 400 other residential units. That's reclaiming derelict buildings that have stood empty for 15, 20 years. That's how you protect the green belt, by building where you can on derelict brownfield sites. That's a policy we're enacting now, and it's one that will continue for the future. So we can give a clear commitment, Mr Mayor, that under the Conservatives on this council, the green belt is safe. Thank you, Councillor Orley. Uh, Councillor Challoner, do you wish to ask a supplementary question on the answer you received? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Okay, lovely. Um, Councillor uh, Casey, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, my question is for the leader of the council. Um, Mr Mayor, now it's been over two weeks uh, since residents in Upper Gorn and Woodsetton and the north of the borough uh, lost access to their local amenity site at Anchor Lane, uh, which was well used, conveniently located, and had been accessible to them for many, many years. And now, despite this time passing, no alternative local provision has been put in place for residents in the north, other than having to fill their car up with waste and travel an hour's round trip uh, down to Stowbridge, which to me, Mr Mayor, is quite frankly unacceptable. Uh, and clearly no alternative provision was considered well in advance of any problems arising. So this has clearly been extremely badly handled by the controlling group right from the start. And this has led Mr Mayor to many residents that I've spoken to uh, in the north and in my ward in Upper Gorn and Woodsetton uh, to conclude that they are simply not seen as a priority by this council. So Mr Mayor, can I ask the leader of the council why no alternative provisions were put in place or readied in anticipation of any problems that may arise? And crucially, when will this mess be sorted out for local residents? Will the leader of the council get back round the table with Wolverhampton to sort this issue out so that residents in areas like Upper Gorn and Woodsetton can access Anchor Lane again and a proper long-term plan drawn up for services at the site, which I can tell him is most definitely what local residents in my ward want. In the end, Mr Mayor, this is now dragging on for far too long to the detriment of local residents, all at the same time that they've just been asked to pay more in council tax and now have less services to access, which is quite frankly ridiculous. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Casey. Councillor Harley to reply. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, the people of Upper Gordon and Woodsitton are indeed our priority. They really are. That's why uh, Councillor Casey's seat is our number one target in the forthcoming local elections. Uh, so we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens on the 6th of May. Reference what's happened with uh, the Uncle Lane tip. He really needs to talk to his socialist colleagues in, in the city of Wolverhampton. They have behaved absolutely appallingly to a neighbouring local authority. No, no, no time at all to sit down and negotiate and ridiculous deadlines given which left our administration with no uh, result, but you just walk away and to have a ridiculous deadline of April the 1st. Well, you know, there, there are certainly shenanigans and funny games going on, Mr Mayor, and they are coming from the Labour Party in Wolverhampton, obviously aided and abetted by their colleagues here in Dudley. Uh, we will find an alternative uh, for the people in the north of the borough. 
uh, but we need other neighbouring authorities to work with us. It's clear that Wolverhampton, prior to May, before May the 6th, don't want to do that. But I'll bet you this, Mr Mayor, with the 300,000 black hole in Wolverhampton's finances, I bet they come back to the table after the 6th of May. Thank you, Councillor Arley. Uh, does uh, Councillor Casey have any supplementary question? Yes, Mr Mayor, and, and thank you for uh, Councillor Harley for, for pointing out uh, that the Upper Gorn and Woodset is, is such a target. I mean, I, it, it gives me it gives me some confidence that I must be doing something right uh, if uh, if I'm such a target in the forthcoming elections. Um, but I don't think many local residents, Mr Mayor, will take comfort in what the leader of the council has said. There was no answer in terms of what I asked around alternative provision considered well in advance of this, which is part of any uh, negotiation, in my opinion, uh, and something that certainly I would have done if if I would have been, you know, in control of the council. Um, and there wasn't really any answer in terms of when we're likely to see uh, local provision restored for local residents in the north of borough, whether that be Anchor Lane or anywhere else. Um, so I can only re reiterate my questions, Mr. Mayor, and hope for an answer. But if not, then obviously the people of Upper Gornland would set and will have to make of that what they will. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Casey. Uh, Councillor Riley, do you wish to respond to the supplementary? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, just to say that uh, uh, Kieran Casey is uh, very deluded. He thinks that he's the target. It's the ward that's the target. It's the ward that the Conservatives will take on May the 6th. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Arley. Uh, call upon uh, Councillor Eileen Taylor. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And it is Elaine, not Eileen. Sorry. And I will point that out. You always call me Eileen and I, I've never been named. Uh, it's never been Eileen. OK, then. Uh, Mr Mayor, I've had a, a letter from a resident who was up in arms again on the issue that's just been spoken about, the Anchor Lane site. This is adding 18 miles for her to go to uh, our tip, which is in Stourbridge, from where she lives, an 18 mile round trip. Um, alongside that, you have to take on board the um, the access to the to this site from every every aspect of our, our, our borough. So everybody in the borough has to head to this one site. Right, where am I? Because oh, my mind's just gone blank again. Um, it's been well publicised that uh, there's a, an issue with this site. This lady wrote to our our, um, our officers who, who sent her a letter saying that um, um, they're trying to do everything they can to mitigate this upheaval. Now, Mr Mayor, as the council acknowledges the upheaval and, and it has been more than 12 months to sort this out, what is the mitigation now so that I can report it back to this lady? It's clear that the Stowbridge site doesn't work for everyone. He's adding hours onto journeys. We are seeing an increase in fly tipping. Mr Mayor, can I ask Councillor Shakespeare to advise me on what to tell these residents? Why are the Tories ignoring half of our borough? And that's what they see. They're ignoring half of our borough. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Taylor. Um, Councillor Shakespeare, would you like to respond? I would like to respond. Um, thank you for those comments. I, well, let's put it this way. Dudley residents have been using Wolverhampton's tip in Anchor Lane since 2003, Councillor Taylor. And this started because Wolverhampton wanted to charge Dudley residents for using the site. So the original payment to Wolverhampton has been reviewed once since the start of this relationship um, and the initial cost was £10,000 a month and the second increase was in 2008 and we increased it to £200,000 an annum and that was backdated to 2007. In 2014, Wolverhampton reduced their opening hours. However, as a gesture of goodwill, we didn't reduce the payment um, and these hours continued for five years. In December 2016, Wolverhampton published their waste strategy for the period 17 to 27 and said they were looking at a super site to save half a million pounds and close Anchor Lane. However, later they updated their strategy for 1828 and said that they actually said the success of recycling has now achieved 
um, the, by their door-to-door -door service has reduced their demand to less than half of their original capacity across both sites. And um, they'll be improving their provision by 2021. Again, we didn't ask for a reduction, even though, though they publicly commented that about their um, reduced throughputs and costs. So in 2020, Wolverhampton asked us if we'd like to conduct an open book exercise um, with them to review our arrangements, which we willingly accepted. And this was to ascertain more accurately uh, cost of our usage um, of the site and to conduct a survey um, to understand our residents' usage. So we conducted the survey in July 2020. Um, after that, when Wolverhampton reopened their Anchor Lane site, we contributed half of their traffic management costs without a quibble. Um, and then we'd had no further contact with them regarding the survey. So we chased them in October 2020 because obviously we wanted to put it into our, our budget setting um, if there was any changes um, and to make sure that formal governance was followed. But there was no response from Wolverhampton whatsoever. So we chased them again in December to be uh, told Council, that Council they... Shakespeare, I'm awfully sorry to interrupt. Uh, but it is a two minute session and we've gone way over the two minutes. Well, I just thought it was worth explaining because it seems to be rather well, uh, you, an issue. You can, you can carry on as far as I'm concerned, but I, I do need to point it out. No, it's, that's... It's carry, on, carry on, Karen. Yeah. Would you, no. rather, would you like me to carry on? Karen? Yes, I'll carry, yes, carry on, yes. Not, Mr. Not, Mr. Yeah. Mayor, point of order. Point of order, yeah. Well, surely everybody's allocated a time to respond and we should stick to that for everyone. It shouldn't be down to uh, individual councillors making a decision on how long they can talk. We need to be fair on the rules and how we apply them. I'm yeah, fine. Yeah. That's fine with me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. A supplementary question, uh, Councillor Taylor. Yes. So you've had 12 months to sort this out. Why haven't you accessed an alternative? Uh, as a service site is not fit for purpose for the whole of the borough. So we chased again in December 2020 because we'd had nothing back from Wolverhampton. We had been chasing them. And the next time we heard from them, despite us chasing, was in the middle of February. And they sent us through a meeting request in mid-February um, and just you know, no agenda. They just had the meeting, bearing in mind this was after our budget setting uh, had gone through cabinet and scrutiny. The meeting was attended and with our disposal, waste disposal manager. And um, although there was no, pro no meeting agenda, they had all their senior management and their legal team, and they were reluctant to talk through any costings and how they were made up. So we had several emails and discussions and Heidi and Matt and our legal representatives, representatives attended a further meeting in March where they explained, we explained our concerns about the costings they'd put forward and they wanted a 67% increase. So the survey that we don't have taken in July had suggested approximately 32% of 130 cars a day maximum went through. And as a result, this was um, what Wolverhampton were asking for. They wanted an increase across all their fixed costs. And this was regardless of, you know, us using the site. They wanted it right across their fixed costs. Is my time up, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, you, you have uh, 20 seconds. Um, so Anchor Lane's landfill rate is 23%, which had increased from 13 the previous year. Our, our landfill rate is 7%. And we didn't feel that Dudley should be paying for an operation that wasn't achieving the best value for money and we were being given an ultimatum. Time's up. Time's up. Time's up. Come on. Mr Mayor, can I come back in? Uh, well, you, you, you're just running out of time. You've just run out now. I haven't, I haven't said a word, so I have run out of time. Time is up. Come on. OK. But those were excuses. You didn't answer the question. Thank you. I didn't get the chance. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Councillor Ridney. You didn't answer. Councillor Ridney. Thank, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, I, I'm going to ask you, it's all right, Karen, I'm going to ask you some questions on the same subject, so you're yeah. all right. 
I, I've got a, a little issue with the, the, the time line on this. This has been ongoing and I take on board what you said for the last 12 months. What I am a little anxious about is I sent emails on the 31st of March and I sent an email um, on the 9th of April that I still haven't had answers to, that I had questions within there that I, I, I wanted to ask on behalf of my residents. Cosley East has again been forgotten by the council, I'm sorry, by the authority. One of the questions I wanted to ask was, why are we now saying they need to go to Stourbridge because Anchor Lane is closed? But when we were talking about the Templey Travellers site, an emphasis was made on the traffic congestion around that Stourbridge site when that site was suggested as a site for the Templey Travellers site. How are we now saying it's OK for all these extra cars from the north of the borough to go down there and that's not a problem for Stourbridge anymore? One of my other questions was about why are we are why don't we look at buying the site in Anchor Lane or a part ownership so that we still have the benefits in the north to use it? And why are we not looking at how much increased congestion there will be on the roads to Stourbridge, increasing air pollution, which again is a real issue that we should be looking at as a borough and has been raised many times. I am a little tight about that I didn't get a reply to that, but I'm sure if you look through your emails, you'll find it and you can and you can reply to it as you did the first one, because there I was asking why we had no warning about this. If this has been ongoing for 12 months, why were councillors in the area here in the north not given any sort of warning that you were going to announce that on, on, on the 31st of March? And I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of your own party councillors in this part. They didn't know either because I've checked. I think it's really sad that we were totally ignored and that again, residents in Coesley East are totally t being ignored and totally being let down. And can I say, um, just to Councillor Harley, I don't really like yeah. the fact that you wrote to one of my constituents saying, yeah. please Councilor don't believe the tripe uttered by Labour members. Clearly, they are as disillusional yeah. as their Wolverhampton counterparts. That's quite rude. Thank you I very much, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor Ridney. Um, very rude. Uh, Councillor Shakespeare. Shakespeare, would you like to respond to Councillor Ridney, please? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Ridney. Apologies if you didn't get a response. Um, your Shadow Cabinet member, Councillor Martin, was fully updated and has been discussing everything. So um, I had hoped that he would share that with you. Um, we're not ignoring people. We have um, we, we were shocked about this and we were also shocked that it was a fait accompli. There was no discussions. We were shocked that an authority um, like Wolverhampton would do something like this after our um, after our budget setting. We offered £75,000 initially and a one year to discuss it. They came back exactly the same, not interested. We went back again and offered them £90,000 and one year. They said, no, we want 67% increase in five years and they refused to discuss any of their costings, which were clearly, we were paying for, for all their back office staff that they, um, it was all included, which would be there anyway. So our final letter, and bearing in mind, all this happened within the space of a couple of weeks, and they were literally, uh, dis I, don't, I don't know what was the matter with them, we, I've never experienced this with another authority ever, um, in the past, I was absolutely appalled at the behaviour. Um, and you've got to bear in mind the first meeting which we had with them was the 20, they, they agreed with us, was the 26th of February. And that was on the Friday before our full council on the Monday. And they expected us to um, make a decision. There was no time for discussion. But even so, we kept going back to them and offering them, look, we'll, we will have discussions with you. We are concerned. For, we obviously have to think of our residents. And whatever we agree, we will backdate to the 1st of April. Time. But they closed the door Thank completely. You. Thank you, Councillor Shakespeare. You've asked your supplicant to now, haven't you, Councillor Ridney? No. No. <laughs> no. Carry on then. <laughs> so, Councillor Shakespeare, could you tell me, have you met with your opposite number in Wolverhampton Council? Have you invited uh, uh, them to meet with you? 
I haven't because this has happened over the space of a couple of weeks and wow. we've had I've had no response. Terrible. So, so no, I haven't. Um, in terms of your question about the Stourbridge site, um, obviously we went to Anchor Lane because Anchor Lane Wolverhampton refused to give the letters out to our residents. Um, we had two officers there. Anchor Lane even refused to let our officers use the toilet. That's how ridiculous Wolverhampton have been. And we had to spend the day negotiating for our officers on site to be able to go use the toilet while they were giving letters out. It has been absolutely appalling. We have increased our, our slots at Starbridge and our opening hours. We have also, we gave people letters out at Anchor Lane and they went down and they had priority access to Starbridge Tiff. So they were able to go straight down and take their rubbish down to Starbridge. And we also have a number of slots that are priority slots through Dudley Council Plus that um, people in the north of the borough can phone Dudley Council Plus um, and use um, and book a slot. We've got around about four and a half, well, over that, four and a half thousand slots a week at, at, Dudley, um, at Dudley Tiff. And I've just, we've checked at three o'clock today and there are loads of spaces available for people to, to book in um, through the booking system. Thank you, Councillor Shakespeare. Um, Councillor Tyler, same subject. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Uh, and this is also for Councillor Shakespeare. I mean, it, it's clear that what we've heard so far is, is scripted facts and figures. So I want to get away from that if I can um, and just compare the Starbridge operation with the Anchor Lane operation. The site on, uh, on Starbridge has been operated since 2012 by a Derbyshire firm, HW Martin Waste Limited, and they retendered for their contract. Uh, in 2018 and it came into into force in June 2019. The cost for the Dudley taxpayer and ratepayer is five million pounds over five years plus VAT. That's a million pounds a year for a company to run our waste site in Sturbridge every year for the next five years and if that continues that'll be more in the next five years after that and five years after that. In comparison to Anchor Lane, the original agreement was £200,000 and that was per year and that increased to £334,000 to take account of the 32% usage by Dudley North residents. So we've got a tip in, in Anchor Lane Cosley for residents in the northern part of the borough which cost the Dudley ratepayer and resident one third of the cost than the one that we own ourselves, which costs a million pounds. This question to Councillor Shakespeare is really simple. Why on earth did you not think that this was a good deal with Wolverhampton for Dudley taxpayers, ratepayers and residents? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Tyler. Uh, Councillor Shakespeare. Am I back on? Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't think that's that's the question really. I have explained how Wolverhampton have behaved, and obviously, if if even if they would have um, allowed us to continue the discussions with them and backdated any payment that was agreed, and explains their costings. Um, then none of this would happen. Wolverhampton firmly shut the door on us. I don't know whether they've got another agenda. I, I don't know, because as I say, I've never, ever experienced this behaviour before. Um, currently at Starbridge TIP, we are in reduced numbers at the moment um, because of um, COVID. And as I explained earlier, we've got about four and a half thousand. Certainly my, um, what I've said earlier is not scripted, it's fact. Um, and you did ask for the facts, and that's what I've given you. Um, as I say, the we we pushed with Wolverhampton to get discussions. We we pushed and pushed, and yet they came back on the 26th of February. Discussions started after our budget, after we'd set out, um, after we'd had our council meeting. I mean, if they expected, as an authority, they know how things work. If they expected 
to have a discussion with us on the Friday and at our full council on Monday without any further discussion for that to have carried on. Um, you know, that they really are not an authority that is worth thinking about. A supplementary question, uh, Councillor Tyler. Yes, please, Mr Mayor. And it's not so much a supplementary question. I'm going to ask the same question again, because all I got was more facts and figures and the question was not answered. The question is, why on earth did you not consider the deal with Wolverhampton to be a good deal? Hmm. Given that it was serving the public in the north of the borough for one third of the cost compared to our tip site at Starbridge. The answer is simple. Was it a good deal or not? Councillor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can, I think yeah, I've can. already answered that question. And uh, had they allowed us to be able to discuss it, um, then we could have negotiated um, a cost. Yes, You've yes. got to bear in mind, Councillor Tyler, we offered them £90,000 a one year. We also offered them to carry discussions if they would oh, past the 1st of April and backdated it. Wolverhampton shut, shut us down and obviously that's had an impact on our residents in the north. But I can assure you that we will continue to look for alternatives for the people in the north of the borough. And in the meantime, we have put some temporary measures in by giving them some preferential um, slots at Starbridge TIP. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Mayor. I'll take that as another non-answer then. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, can Councillor Sarata. It, uh, it's Sahota. Sahota. Yeah, Thank okay. you. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've listened. Uh, this is really a question for Karen. Karen, I'll listen to some of your uh, questions and I'm going to approach this uh, Uncle Lane's uh, question from a different angle. Now, clearly, the question really is aimed at how we, the uh, how the cabinet plan to mitigate this key risk, right? Now, all directorates have a risk register. Which is, re which is reviewed on a periodic basis to ensure that all key risks are managed, right? And this risk register is shared with the cabinet as scrutiny to ensure that the, the, the directors can deliver key services for the council and its, and its residents. Now, my question basically is, did the cabinet review this risk register? And surely this must have been the key risk because waste disposable and litter is, is a key requirement for all councils. And this is something that is out of our hands as we have a contract with the Northampton Council. So my question here, uh, Karen, to yourself and the cabinet is when was the risk register reviewed? Because all risk registers should have mitigation plans in place by officers. If the risk is uh, not going to be achieved, we need to have plan A, B and C. Now, read what you've stated for what, what timelines are, et cetera, et cetera, uh, surveyed the summer, then we had another meeting. What I want to know is, as a cabinet member and as a cabinet, where was the parallel approach being adopted with your instructions to the officers saying, look, if this doesn't come off, we need a plan B and C for to, so we can fulfill our obligations and also provide the people in the north with place. Well, that's my that's my question. I, I really need this question answered. Really, was the risk register reviewed by the cabinet, and all the uh, mitigations uh, accepted by the cabinet? That's, that's you, where I'm coming from. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Shakespeare, to respond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Wolves didn't give give us the opportunity, Councillor Sahota. Um, there was no opportunity. The whole way they approached us was absolutely appalling. The question was on well, risk. That's not, that's not the answer. I'm sorry. The, the answer and, is... And, and, <laughs> and, uh, you've interrupted me, Councillor Sahota. Carry okay. on. Can I continue, Mr Mayor? Yes, yes certainly, Councillor Shakespeare. Thank you. This was not a risk. It, it, it was not a risk. We had a perfect agreement with them and everything was going smoothly. We would have no reason to think that they would behave in this way until on the 26th of February, um, they basically shut the door on us. We gave 
when you say um you know what options we put we put a number of options forward to try and get an agreement with Wolverhampton as I've already stated we offered um, 75,000 increase we offered a 90,000 increase with one year they refused they wanted 67 percent in five years we even offered as I've already mentioned to continue negotiations past the 1st of April and whatever was agreed, we would backdate that figure to the 1st of April. We have never ever had any issues like this with Wolverhampton. As I've already explained, we played half of their, when they reopened the site last year, we agreed willingly to pay half of their highway maintenance costs. We didn't, we didn't say, oh, we only want to give you 20%. The tip was opening. We said we made an agreement and we paid half of their um, highway maintenance costs. When they said they've got a reduction in output, we didn't quibble then. We didn't say, oh, actually, can we have a reduction? When they reduced their hours for five years, we didn't ask for a reduction. So why on earth they are behaving in this way at the moment, whether it's because we are very close to an election and I don't know what political gain they feel they can they can gain from this. Thank you, Councillor Chair. We... Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I can I come back to this, please? Uh, it's supplementary. You're allowed yes, a supplementary yes. question. And I think I think I just want to sort of clarify. I think Karen has answered but has not answered my question. I have asked clearly. If was this a risk on the risk register with the director that's responsible for waste and street cleansing? If it was then we would like to see why that risk wasn't managed by the cabinet in terms of when, when, the, when the red flags were really clearly there, that this wasn't going as it was. So that's the first question. And if, she, if Karen is then saying that this wasn't on the risk register, then I think that's a fundamental question in terms of uh, this, why this wasn't on the risk register. As clearly, it's blown up in our face and it should have been a risk. So there's two questions there really that the cabinet really need to answer the people of Dudley Borough, particularly in the north. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Shakespeare. I think, whoops, there you go. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think I've already answered your question. It, no. it was, it's, uh, as far as I know, it's not on a risk register. Why would it need to be when we had an agreement, a long standing agreement? Since 2003, we've been working with Wolverhampton. As I've said, you know, 26th of February was the first discussions that they came to us. Well, it wasn't even a discussion. They didn't discuss anything. They just gave us an ultimatum, pay this money, 67% increase, five year, we're tying you in for five years, um, or forget it, your, your residents are not going to use Anchor Lane. Now, if that's good business in any, whether an authority or a private business, then I think they should be ashamed of themselves. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Shakespeare. Um, Councillor Casey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, question to the leader. Um, if you'll indulge me, Mr. Mayor, slightly as uh, several members on the Labour side. Seem well. You'll have to stop then. No. You're on mute, Sean. He's on mute, yeah. yeah. You've got yeah. on mute, Sean. Oh, am, I, am I back? Can you hear me, Mr. Yes. Yeah. We can hear you now, sir. OK, thank you. I'll start again. If you'll indulge me, Mr. Mayor, I have got a question for the leader. Uh, first of all, if you call me a cynic, uh, call me a cynic, but Labour Wolverhampton suddenly denying access to Dudley North residents to their tip. And then Labour councillors in Dudley popping it on their leaflets and spending an entire question and answer section, section asking ridiculous and sometimes rude questions to the cabinet member responsible. I think that answers all the points you need to know. I don't really believe that. Think, Mr Mayor, uh, yeah. before I get to my question, I am fed up of hearing that Cosley is some independent state in Dudley North. It is not. It is an important part of the north of the borough, just as Sedgley, Gornal, Upper Gornal and all the other wards are. In terms of my question, I want to change the subject, Mr Mayor, and ask the 
the leader. Conversion therapy um, is a practice of trying to change an individual's sexual orientation from gay or bi to heterosexual using psychological, physical or other interventions. Uh, will the leader of the council commit to work with local LGBT organisations to try and stop this practice, which I feel um, is a disgusting way to treat human beings. You are born the way you were born. You are what you are. In my case, I, I am what I am. I'm very proud and very happy to be a gay man. Uh, and the question again to the leader is, will you work with organisations to, to try and stop Can, this practice? In you're Dudley. running over Thank time you. now, Councillor. Councillor Harley to reply, please. Councillor Harley. Yep. Two, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just trying to get you have two questions. You have two questions there. I only really had the caught the first one from uh, Councillor Casey uh, to answer him straight uh, to cut down on the time because the clock's ticking. Um, this practice is abhorrent. It's out of date. Uh, that we've got no place for this in a civilized society. So yes, he has my full support to uh, stop this uh, absolutely horrendous practice. Thank you, Councillor Arley. Um, you have a chance now as uh, a sub, uh, supplementary question, Councillor Casey. I'm Hi. very happy with the You're leader's up. response. Thank you, Mr. May. Thank you, Councillor Casey. Um, Councillor May. Millward. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, could, sorry, could I just ask that everybody turns their mics off, please? Because unless they're speaking, because it's interfering with my reception. Uh, thank you, Councillor Foster. It, you, it's, been, it's been very, it's been di very difficult for me sitting here as well as you can well imagine. So I do sympathise with you, Councillor Millward. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. And it is a question to uh, our cabinet member, um, Karen Shakespeare. Uh, it, it, there's a number of questions here. Um, so if I could ask the first one, um, Councillor Shakespeare. I'm right in thinking that the shadow cabinet member, who I believe is John Martin, was fully briefed about this. And obviously it has not been cascaded down, but you wouldn't be able to answer that question other than the first part of my question, that he was actually fully briefed. Um, is it also true, Councillor Shakespeare, that Dudley itself had to carry out the survey because Wolverhampton Borough Council, uh, sorry, City Council, couldn't be bothered, although they were the instigators of the survey. And thirdly, I, I am mindful of the risk register as I was cabinet member for finance some time ago. And uh, obviously, if you look at your audit um, papers, you will realise that this isn't on a risk register anyway. Um, so Councillor Sahota, I think needs to get a bit more training. Um, and also, if I could just check with you, Councillor Shakespeare, that the risk register would not be needed because of the agreement already in place. And also, we have an alternative, an alternative that is working really well. And for someone who lives north of the, in north of, uh, the borough, it's a round trip of nearly 13 miles, well, just over 13 miles. Um, I've used the tip three times in the last six weeks at Stowbridge. No issues whatsoever. One of the best facilities I have ever used. Um, so, and we, I've actually never used Anchor Lane, but also, uh, Councillor Shakespeare, if you could answer me this, the fact that Wolverhampton is landfilling 23% when Dudley just landfills 7%, which I believe is the bottom ash from the incinerator, just shows Council that Bill Ward. you don't need to be in cahoots with this disgusting authority. Thank you. Councillor Shakespeare to reply. Are you there, Councillor Shaw? Yeah, I'm nearly there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, um, Heidi Marshgaten has um, had discussions with our shadow cabinet member, Councillor John Martin, who I can see has got his hand up. Um, and also, yes, we did carry out the survey because um, Wolverhampton asked for it, but they didn't want to do it. So we actually carried out the survey for them on, with our residents. Um, and I've forgotten what, oh, uh, yeah, about landfill. I mean, um, that, that's frightening, the fact that um, 
obviously the the operation in Wolverhampton is in house it's not external people they use and the fact that they would allow their landfill to be at 23% i mean it was 13% to start with and and then it went up to um 23% um obviously i think also the figures they were using were um 2019-20 went in some of the costings but every time they sent us costings through they changed so obviously we had no confidence in any any of that whatsoever um but yes it it, it is pretty disgraceful in this day and age that they would be putting 23 percent to landfill um our tip in starbridge is seven percent and our overall landfill for dudley is around two percent um so clearly they their operation it isn't effective up there uh, i hope i've covered that all councillor millwood uh, right, thank you. Councillor Mill, have you got a supplementary question you'd like to ask the Cabinet member? Uh, yes, I have, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, so, so, yes, we know, um, I believe, we're open from 8 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock at night, which obviously um, I hope will continue for as long as, it, uh, as, long as is necessary. Um, and I hope that people across the north of the borough will go down and, and see this marvellous facility. And also, when they take a lot of their uh, rubbish, and a lot of my rubbish wasn't actually rubbish, it was um, it was uh, goods that could be upcycled, recycled, reused, uh, because I, I, I recycle most things anyway, and I hate to, to throw things away. So oh, I do hope God. that that will be really um, sort of, um, you know, sort of, you know, pushed forward that we do look at upcycling and recycling and what I can't use, somebody else may do. So I was just want to know if, if um, Councillor Shakespeare will agree with me that uh, we do need to keep the tip, the tip open for, for longer. Um, and also, you know, that we put uh, measures in place to continue using and reusing good quality stuff that unfortunately, because of the um, charity shops being closed, we can't take there. And I also want to know, do, have we actually seen an increase in um, fly tipping? Because usually people who fly tip are too idle and too tight to buy an actual waste licence. And it's not really your your individual households that go out and fly tip because they can't use an amenity site. So have we seen any increases in numbers, uh, Councillor Shakespeare? Thank you. Councillor Shakespeare to reply. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, the Starbridge um, tip is now open eight till six on Monday to Friday and eight to four on okay. Saturday and Sunday. And as I mentioned earlier, there are uh, three o'clock today. We've got several hundred spaces each day available for people to book. Um, we haven't seen an increase in fly tipping because the people um, who will go to a tip are usually responsible people the people that um are the people that fly tip obviously as councillor millwood has explained are people who would never ever use a tip they just want to get rid of rubbish um and and obviously illegally um so no we haven't had an increase um obviously there is a recycling shop there tip where people can leave things if they they or buy things. I, um, I think the deputy mayor or the sorry, the mayor's consort has actually purchased a few things from Starbridge recycling shop. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So hopefully I've answered your questions there. And um, obviously we will continue to be working on the overall waste strategy and um, looking for options uh, moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Shakespeare. Councillor Zorda. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. On a similar issue, Ankeleen, um, and I'd like to ask uh, the Cabinet member who's responsible um, for this, where has she been over these 12 months? Uh, I've heard a range of discussion today, and the latter bit has been almost like this is planned. It's marvellous, I heard. It's marvellous. Well, it might be marvellous to you guys who live around the corner, but for those people who have to travel 18 miles 
20 odd miles, it's inconvenient. And that's the biggest issue. It's inconvenient. And what the people of this borough who live in the north want to, is a local facility that they can recycle. You talk about increasing recycling and at the same time you've taken away one opportunity for the north of the borough to take uh, their recycling items uh, to. Um, you know, we've spent, the same cabinet member has spent £120,000 on artificial grass that nobody uses, but we weren't prepared to spend the money for 32% of the borough for facilities that they do use. We've heard that we pay £5 million for a facility in Stourbridge, but we weren't prepared to pay £300,000 or whatever the final figure was for, for an area the other side of the borough. And actually, this is about governance. And Councillor Sahota is asking some very pertinent questions because I believe a written agreement doesn't actually exist. And that's why this council has found itself in this posi position, because there is absolutely no governance around this issue. And I would like to know from Councillor uh, okay. Shakespeare, what does she plan to do? Where are we going? All I've heard is calling people names across the borough finger pointing politics and telling us it wasn't their fault it was somebody across the borough and oh well they happened to be labor but you then said publicly that you were going to go and negotiate with another local authority which happened to be labor and try and get a, a solution from there and you didn't achieve that the reality is this is an administration who can't negotiate it cannot negotiate with that's so hard that you have yeah. over step the mark a little bit well i don't think i have but i might have overstepped the time um, <laughs> well that's what i meant sorry yeah, yeah. well, yeah. well yeah. my question yeah. is to councillor shakespeare what's the way forward now councillor shakespeare to reply i think councillor zard has had it it's extra two minutes just the same as i do uh, I did. Um, obviously, you, I'll go from the, the last comment. Um, actually, Councillor Kettle is the Cabinet Member for Regeneration. So it should be Councillor Kettle that you're directing your comments um, about the grass um, and how that works. So that's actually not under my brief. Uh, that's the regener uh, re regeneration issues. Um, I know it's inconvenient for the people in the north of the borough but we put emergency an emergency procedure in to allow them to still be able to use a facility in Dudley um, and we will continue to look at options right across the borough and around um, which will help support the needs of the people right around the borough including um, the people in the north um, so, yes, we will be looking for options. We will be looking at our waste strategy, Councillor Zarda. I hope that answers your question. Councillor Zarda, did you want a supplementary on that, did you? Yes, I did, actually. I did. Firstly, uh, now they've started blaming each other, Mr Mayor. Now they're saying it's Councillor Kettle's fault that we've got artificial grass that we didn't need. Uh, so we've moved over from local authorities. The question here now remains that... You have been negotiating for 12 months. I'd like to think you've already got a waste strategy in place. So telling me today that you're going to have a waste strategy fills me with even less confidence than when I started the question. So the questions remain. The reason that you're in this position is because you didn't have a written agreement. There was no governance in place. You proposed a set of figures and you then uh, were negotiating on the ba ba basis of those figures. You started calling other authorities names and it was finger pointing politics. And in the end, then we couldn't get a response. So how long, uh, Mr. Mayor, will the people of the North have to wait for a solution? We keep getting told that there's going to be jam tomorrow and my bread, Mr. Mayor, is beginning to dry up. And I want to know when will the people of Dudley North get a solution? It's as simple as that. Two days, three days, three weeks. You've had 12 months. 
pretending that you've this has been last minute sprung on you by the people of Wolverhampton is just disingenuous, Mr. Mayor, and the people in the north of this borough deserve the truth. Yes, thank you, Councillor Shorda. Um, can I remind members that we've got six minutes left and I've got another three speakers. Uh, would you like to respond to uh, Councillor Shorda, Councillor Shakespeare, please? I certainly would. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Zarda, I'm not quite sure whether either your reception's poor or you are not listening. Um, this hasn't been going on for 12 months. We had an ultimatum given to us on the 26th of February. No discussion, no debate, nothing that we were expecting. We put, um, we went back, I've already explained, we offered 75,000 and one year. We offered 90,000 and one year, but we were just closed down at every opportunity. I've got the letters in front of me and I am not um, commenting. Um, I, I think what I've said about Wolverhampton is correct because I have never, we do a lot of work with Wolverhampton. But I have never experienced this, whether it's the person who's in charge of that, I, I really don't know. But we have never, ever experienced this sort of behaviour with another authority before. We've never had an authority. They, they have to work to their budgets and, and um, you know, go through full council and cabinet, etc. They have to prepare their budgets just the same as every other authority. So... You know, I can say they knew what they were doing, why they were doing it, I don't, I don't know. Are you interrupting me? Sorry. Um, why they were doing it, I have, I have absolutely um, no idea why they would want to do this. Um, so, as I say, I've already explained the timings. You've said something different. Um, I've explained, you asked for the facts, which I have given you. Um, so I hope that answers your question, Councillor Zarda. Thank you, Councillor Shakespeare. Uh, three members wishing to speak. Got five minutes Doesn't left. Councillor uh, Councillor Foster, you were first. I've taken my hand down a while ago. Sorry, it's, uh, you just appeared on my list, Councillor Foster. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lowe, then, please. He's also taken, taken my hand, hand down. down. Just release Councillor Martin then, please. Councillor John Martin. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, um, before I ask my question, I just uh, want to be helpful to uh, to the meeting and to the Cabinet member. Um, I was actually informed by the Acting Director on the 31st of March um, at 20 past one in the afternoon that Wolverhampton City Council had withdrawn access to the Anchor Lane site for our Dudley residents. So that was the first time that I became aware of this issue and I was not aware of any previous negotiations around the contract or the price. In terms of a question for um, the cabinet member uh, for the environment, um, because I think it would be nice to end on a positive note and a positive vision for the future, so would Councillor Shakespeare join with me in looking forward to the time when Dudley residents uh, access to Anchor Lane is reinstated? It will require goodwill on behalf of uh, both councils involved, but also um, in terms of using, you know, modern technology. Um, technology is perhaps the answer and, and the way forward, not just for Dudley Council and neighbouring authorities, but in terms of the waste strategy, because it should be possible to have a system based on vehicle registration and, and an appointment system where residents from different local, local authorities can actually use civic community sites across local authority borders and boundaries. And quite frankly, Mr. Mayor, I would hope that the administration, the controlling administration, would support that positive vision of the future. Um, it will may require some investment, but as I understand it, this is the strategy that a number of local authorities are looking to pursue. So in terms of um, convenience for local residents, um, surely that positive vision 
of the future is something that at least we can all agree upon. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Shakespeare, did you want to make a quick response? I can do. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillor Martin, I think that's something we, we totally agree on. Um, yes, I would certainly like to use technology and work it in a way um, that you mentioned. That is something I am certainly looking at at the moment. Um, in terms of um, the timing when you were advised, um, to be quite honest, right up until that point, we were hoping that we would be able to get an agreement um, with with Wolverhampton. Yeah. And as I say, it, it, we really were trying right up until the wire. And then when we had the final letter, um, it, it just closed us down. So um, obviously you were updated at the at the earliest opportunity when when the, there was nothing um, nothing further to say that will, as I say, when we were closed down. So thank you, Councillor Martin, for those comments. Uh, the one hour allowed to questions has now expired. Any members indicating to ask a question can either send it in in writing and raise the question, if possible, at the next appropriate meeting. It's been an exciting time for us this evening. Thank you all very much for the way that you treated me with the respect that I do fully appreciate. And as there is no urgent business, so that concludes this meeting of the Council. Once again, thank you very, very much indeed for your attendance and all those standing for election, all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 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 Th